right, so the government is waging war on banks on multiple fronts. We bail them out, now we're going to jail them out. CNBC Scott Cohn joins us with some of the ugly details. Hello, Scott. Larry, I know you consider this an assault on capitalism, but others look at what happened in the mortgage market as an assault on the economy. So tonight, Wall Street finds itself surrounded by regulators. And while some might hope for some sort of settlement that will put it all to rest, don't bet on that anytime soon. Leading the charge for a change, the Securities and Exchange Commission, first out of the blocks with its suit last month against Goldman Sachs, as well as its suit still pending against countrywide execs nearly a year ago. New York Attorney General Andrew Cuomo is deep into his investigation of the banks and the rating agencies with the subpoenas issued this week. There are multiple congressional investigations yielding millions of pages of documents, all likely to wind up in the hands of regulators. Even federal prosecutors are sniffing around for criminal violations, although they're in the very preliminary stages of their probe. Last time Wall Street was in America's doghouse after the tech bubble burst, it managed to reach a so-called global settlement on research analysts with the Securities and Exchange Commission and then New York Attorney General Elliot Spitzer. But that took two years to play out. This time around, according to our sources, the regulators are just warming up. Mm. Larry? All right, Scott, that is not particularly good news. Now, tonight, I have another dumb top five list. That is a top five list on dumb things. Why the assault on banks is an assault on the whole economy and investors and customers. Washington looks to bail them and then jail them. And the impact of criminalizing banks could be just awful. All right, here's my list. One, it would be a distraction from the business of making loans and serving consumers. Two, it would have a chilling effect on bank lending and risk taking. Three, Multiple high-cost settlements is going to cut into capital and profits and therefore loans. Four, it weakens the entire economic recovery. Five, what folks don't realize is the Senate is now reducing debit card fees, and that again is bad for bank profits and capital and loans. I thought we wanted them to make loans. I guess not. So instead of criminalizing the banks with this G-man assault, why can't we have one global settlement with new rules of the road and get it all behind us? Let's get a quick response from our two guests. A quick response. Tom Curran, Pekar N. Abramson, former federal prosecutor, Mark Calabria, director of financial regulation studies at the Cato Institute. Tom Curran, if this was a serious gang in Washington, they would try to help the banks with one global settlement, new rules of the road. Why can't we do that? Because there are too many players. You can't, the federal government can't dictate to Andrew Cuomo what he's going to be doing in his investigations. Uh, and the various states, too. It's, it's a mess. Yeah, but Peter, uh, Mark Calabria, rather, you can't, are you going to tell me that President Obama and Rahm Emanuel couldn't dictate a global settlement? Of course they can. They could tell Cuomo what to do. They could tell all these agencies what to do. In the good interest of our economy, Mark. I mean, they, at minimum, they could set the tone for us trying to all to come together to try to figure out what the issue is and move on rather than 50 different players trying to come at it from 50 different directions. I mean, the thing is, I hate to say this, but at least during that Spitzer Research Wall Street attack, they made one global settlement and that was done with it, all right? You paid your fee, you went on your way, and it was over. This is going to drag on for I don't know how long. It's a total distraction. It's bad for lending. I mean, Tom Curran, that's the deal. Somebody in the White House has to kick some butt. Otherwise, we're going to get our butt kicked. Not going not to happen. All right, that's great. Tom Curran and Mark Calabria are going to come back because I am not yet satisfied.